Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in uh, the Hollywood Hills above LA. A beautiful day for my final climate change meltdown roundup rant from Hollywood before me and the little dog head to the high sierras but before i go we just need to uh dive into what uh, al gore says is our daily romp through the book of revelation and that's going on the mainstream media to uh see how climate change is sending this planet into a burning lake of fire and i gotta put the little dog down settle down uh, Good Lord, guys, I, 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 any one of these rants, I have really got to get the, uh, my buttons out, both of my buttons out today. Where do we start? I got about, good Lord, 20 stories. Let's just start right here in California. You know, there was some, uh, some ridiculous myth when I came out to California this year that because the drought is over that meant that wildfire season was over whoa 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 us up good lord uh so anyway of course when i get out of here what i actually find is is all of the damage from all of the floods but anyone who thinks that the wildfire season is over in California because the number one story on planet Earth is this big ass wildfire about, I think about 90 miles from here. Uh, burning up all of these one percenters houses and shit up in San Luis Obispo County. As we speak, California in flames. Good thing the drought is over. All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, several versions of this uh, no shit Sherlock story, uh, mainly from the from the New York Times, and I see my computer is just simply. I don't know if maybe I'm being hacked by this. Uh, the New York Times is not coming through, but fortunately, I have a a sum a, a summation of this big story in the New York Times. Uh, reducing fossil fuel emissions is not stopping CO2 rise. Oh shit. As scientists worry that we may have saturated the Earth's natural carbon sinks. You know, by a carbon sink, they are talking about uh, the oceans and the rainforest soaking up carbon. But they seem to have coming, topping off. Anyway, okay, for anyone who does not understand this, over the past few years, many nations have made strong efforts to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide they emit into the atmosphere by replacing fossil fuel plants with renewable energy sources we may have succeeded in starting to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions starting this year. This is a huge accomplishment. But new research says that might not be enough. The amount of CO2 in our atmosphere is increasing anyway. And uh, yeah, so, of, of course, what they talk about is uh, this that they barely mention this and 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 the New York Times article expands on this is that all of this unadulterated horseshit 
uh, about CO2 levels is predicated on whether or not you believe the self-reporting of all of these countries' statistics. They, it, it is up to each individual country to report to the United Nations about their carbon. There, there is no independent body looking at this. So, you know, this entire unadulterated horseshit about the, the carbon emissions leveling off is predicated on a pile of unadulterated horseshit. Do you understand this? Carbon emissions are not leveling off, but assuming you completely uh, suspend disbelief, I think is, is the term, uh, then, then, then why could this be? Why could CO2 levels uh, continue to rise if it's not coming from humans? Well, the, the word methane never mentioned anywhere in this story. Or in the or in the bigger New York Times piece, not one mention of methane bombs. So what the theory is apparently uh, the the unproven theory, the uh, just a wild guess is that uh, the hypothesis is that there is nowhere left for the CO2 to go. The Earth has a number of carbon sinks where carbon can be absorbed out of the atmosphere. The two largest are the oceans and the land plants. But these large carbon sinks might be growing saturated. And so while they're trying to figure this out, the bottom line of this, one thing is clear we are rapidly approaching a cliff and that cliff may be much closer than we thought there you go here is the new york times piece the the, the further version uh titled carbon in atmosphere is rising <coughs> even as emissions stabilize and uh, anyway uh, <coughs> it's pretty much that this is just the the larger uh, the larger version and uh, this probably the most important sentence in the entire article. The amount of carbon dioxide that people are pumping into the air seems to have stabilized, at least judging from the data that countries compile on their own emissions. Anyway, this is, uh, so, again, they just go into bigger detail about what defines a carbon sink and all of that. This is some climatologist, Dr. Tans, I don't know his first name, of NOAA, uh, Tans said that... <clears throat> Even if global emissions flatten, even, even if they really do flatten out at today's high level, the world would still be in grave trouble. Quote, if emissions were to stay flat for the next two decades, which would be called an achievement in some sense, it is terrible for the climate problem. Yes, uh, all of this bullshit, uh, total horseshit. 
about these flat CO2 emissions. Okay, let's go down to Antarctica. Antarctica on the edge. This is from Al Jazeera. Antarctica, one of the most remote and desolate locations on Earth, also functions as one of the world's main cooling systems. However, after decades of greenhouse gas emissions and global warming, parts of the continent, the frozen continent, are now warming faster than anywhere else on the planet. Over the years, climate change has led to increased erosion of the continent, altered ocean currents, and affected wildlife. Warmer currents are now flowing further south towards the icy terrain, contributing to glacial melt, rising sea levels, and drastically changing habitats. We certainly know enough to say we need to act now. We should have acted yesterday. Oh shit, Sherlock. Yep, and of course, we're still waiting for that giant iceberg, that huge iceberg the size of uh, Connecticut to break off. Giant iceberg like a niggling tooth set to crack off Antarctica. We're all waiting for the world's biggest iceberg in history to go. Let's go to the other end of the planet. Many versions of this story on the mainstream media today. Greenland, now a major driver of rising seas. <clears throat> Ocean levels rose 50% faster in 2014 than they did in 1993, with meltwater from the Greenland ice sheet now supplying 25% of total sea level increase compared with just 5% 20 years ago, researchers reported Monday. The new findings add to growing concern among scientists that the global watermark is climbing more rapidly than forecast only a few years ago with potentially devastating consequences. Oh, and this is our Humpty Dumpty tribe hero Peter Wadhams uh, weighing in on, you know, why, why we're so fucked you know, talking about how the, the IPCC, quote, makes a very conservative projection of total sea level rise by the end of the century. Um, quote, quoting Wadhams, yet there is convincing evidence, including accelerating losses of mass from Greenland and Antarctica that the rate of, of sea level rise is actually increasing and increasing exponentially. Most scientists now expect total sea level rise to be well over a meter by the end of the century, Wadham said. Greenland alone contains enough frozen water to lift oceans by about 23 feet. Though experts disagree on the global warming threshold for irreversible melting and how long that would take once set in motion. There you go, and this is the Real News Network weighing in on, uh, on this same study. Estimates of sea level rise by 2100 have tripled in the past few years. Um, 
pretty much saying the same thing. Okay, uh, in 2013, the IPCC opined, opined that if greenhouse gas emissions continued on current trends, the likely maximum of sea level rise by 2100 was about one meter. Then in May 2016, only three years later, a study in the prestigious scientific journal Nature concluded that if high levels of greenhouse gas emissions continues, oceans could rise by close to two meters by the end of the century. In less than three years, scientists essentially doubled the IPCC's 2013 estimate. And, uh, and, and, and it's going up, up, up. Uh, and then this is the, you know, uh, all of these, uh, they, they just, what they do is they t talk to various, I don't have time to break all of this down, but the bottom line is more and more and more of these climatologists uh, say, saying we're, we're fucked. And let's go over to New Atlas to find the story, Evidence of Tipping Points, Turning Climate Change from Gradual to Rapid. Oh, shit. Sure. Yes, anyone who has seen The Day After Tomorrow will be familiar with the concept of tipping points, where slow and gradual changes in atmospheric CO2 levels can reach a point that triggers a sudden change in temperatures. And now a new study has found evidence of such tipping points occurring in the past resulting in dramatic climate changes over a short period. Ice core samples in Greenland have shown in this new research that during the last glacial period, temperatures periodically shot up by as much as 10 degrees Celsius, or 18 degrees Fahrenheit, in a matter of decades. Yes, and uh, this is new research from the University of Cardiff. Uh, bearing that out, that once these tipping points are reached, chaos reigns, and we are Okay, I want to thank Groot for sending me this uh, <clears throat> this uh, long in-depth article from the Guardian. From heat waves to hurricanes, floods to famine, seven climate change hotspots. So here we look at seven key regions to see how each is tackling the consequences of climate change. Uh, all around the world, farmers, city authorities, and scientists have observed changing patterns of rainfall, temperature rises, and floods. 15 out of the 16 hottest years have been recorded since 2000. Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions steadily climb. Oceans are warming and glaciers, ice caps, and sea ice are melting faster than expected. Meanwhile, heat and rainfall records tumble. So anyway, they, so this is the Guardian just going around the planet, picking out seven places. We have Murcia, Spain. We have, no shit, Sherlock, Dhaka, Bangladesh. Gee, what a surprise, Malawi and Sub-Saharan Africa. Then we have Norway uh, up in the other end. Don't forget Brazil. Uh, let's see, 
and then of course Manila, Philippines, and do not forget New York City, USA. New York City, USA. One of the uh, seven climate hot spots, but of course, as they uh, say in the bottom line, um, the bottom line is that climate hot spots intersect and nowhere will escape the changes taking place. What happens in the Amazon affects West Africa. The North American growing season may depend on the melting of Arctic ice. Flooding in Asian cities affected by warming on the high Tibetan plateau and urban areas ultimately depend on the countryside. We are all in a hot spot now. We are all in a hot spot now is the bottom line. Oh, boy, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, pretty much the headline says it all from LiveScience.com. Why greener, greener gas-powered vehicles are not as clean as you think they are. Oh, shit. Sure uh, does anybody think that greener gas-powered vehicles... Moving on. Okay, I've already been over this one twice. I'm just going to mention it one more time. Can the U.S. run only on wind, water, and solar power? Scientists disagree. And this is, uh, as I've mentioned how many times, about this, uh, you know, these, this debate uh, you know, some of these clueless fucking techno-utopians uh, acting like that, uh, that the U.S. is going to be able to completely wean itself off fossil fuels by the year 2055. And anybody with a goddamn brain uh, pulling out the bullshit detector button. Anyway, what's going on down there in Australia with the manatees? The Australian manatees starve as climate change destroys their food supply. In, in Australia, the, the dugong, these dugongs are Australian manatees, populations are crashing as extreme weather events combined with increased river sediments from human activities are depleting the seagrasses they live on. You can kiss the dugong goodbye. I love this hilarious story. If Trump and Modi talk climate. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I can imagine what percentage of, uh, how many total minutes on that meeting between the, the two single biggest planet eaters on planet Earth on Monday. I don't know how long they met for. Let's say it was a two hour meeting. How many how many minutes of those two hours do you think Donald Trump and Narendra Modi were talking about climate change? They were talking about uh, industrialization. They were inking oil deals. They sure as shit were, uh, were inking uh, military weapon deals. Uh, <laughs> Trump and Modi talking climate change. Uh, that, that would be the fastest uh, conversation in history. 
pull your head out of your ass. So, uh, Rick Perry, he, he, he just can't get his foot out of his mouth. Perry calls for debate on man's role in climate change. Energy Secretary Rick Perry on Tuesday called for an intellectual debate, an intellectual debate on humans' role in climate change, saying he still not does not believe the science is settled. That that intellectual midget, Rick Perry, calling for an intellectual debate on climate change. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, guys, I'm sorry, I just can't think on my feet fast enough to think of a proper analogy for Rick Perry calling for an intellectual debate. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, here is world mayors urge G20 leaders to save the planet. There you go. <laughs> Dozens of city mayors from around the world, including Washington, Berlin, Paris, Tokyo, and Sydney, on Monday call on the G20 leaders to stick to their commitments on tackling climate change. Uh, okay, so let's look at a few of the ways that the uh, that the world, that the planet, the G20 leaders, and all of these mad scientists. How are we? What is our global response to what is going on on this planet? Of course, we cannot have a uh, conversation about the global response. Uh, to uh, <clears throat> to this without talking about the geoengineering taboo. The geoengineering taboo. And this is a long article in the Energy Collective from some planet eater working for Shell Oil. And this is an excerpt from his hilarious book Putting the genie back, saving the climate and energy dilemma. And uh, so, anyway, so this is this guy from Shell Oil cheering on, uh, basically dumping sulfur. And the simplest, the simplest solution would be what. Uh, conspiracy wackos would call chemtrails and that is this is this guy from Shell Shell Oil cheering on uh, a fleet of 150 aircraft injecting sulfur into the stratosphere on a continuous basis are you understanding once we start this we can never stop for the next 10,000 years on a continuous basis in brackets for the next 10,000 years could potentially offset the warming associated with a doubling of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. <clears throat> yes. Anyway, I cannot imagine why an oil company executive is cheering on geoengineering. Okay, so what are the scientists uh, doing to save the coral reefs? Scientists hope hope artificial reef made of plastic 
I hope plastic reef can protect ocean biodiversity from climate change. Okay, guys, this next sentence was not written by The Onion. This is from Digital Trends magazine. You know, how many times have we heard from the vegans and from me that it's, I don't eat beef that it is beef cattle? Beef cattle, well, well, humans are the number one species responsible for greenhouse gas emissions, but the number two species is the invention, the human invention called beef cattle being the number one of our livestock uh, causing global warming. So what are we going, what are the scientists doing about it? Scientists are developing heat resistant cows to prepare for a hotter planet. Researchers from the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agriculture Sciences really are trying to genetically engineer heat resistant cows of the future. The project involves the use of genomic tools to produce a new kind of bovine that has the ability to adapt to live in hot weather while also producing top quality beef in the process. From genetically engineered cows to this is how wind power is going to save the planet. Wind power's big bet, turbines taller than skyscrapers. Wind farm operators are now betting on a new generation of colossal turbines, which will dwarf many skyscrapers. The world's three leading offshore wind operators told Reuters they're looking to mega turbines to help adapt to the upcoming reality. There you go. These massive machines will each stand 300 meters tall, 300, 900 feet, with 200 meter rotors that will stretch the length of two football fields. <clears throat> and finally, for the chuckle of the day, I was talking about uh, the continuity of government in my rant yesterday. And one part of that is this fleet of these four airplanes that are supposed to save uh, all of these one percenters in, at doomsday. I love this one. Tornado knocks out half the Pentagon's fleet of nuke-proof doomsday planes. <laughs> there you go. So what it was that we have the doomsday seed vault uh, melting and flooding and now we have the doomsday airplanes being knocked out of the sky by tornadoes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, I have got to uh, wrap up this uh, week's edition of our climate change meltdown roundup rant because I've got to pack up my gas sucking truck regretfully leave the Hollywood Hills heading up to Bridgeport, California and uh, back to the hot springs which are probably buried under the floodwaters. But anyway, uh, assuming my computer does not get hacked, I will somehow figure out a way to keep ranting as I did last year from the hot springs from LA, baby. Bye guys. Yes, and I'll go.